Hi everyone, my name is Abimbola Adiwale, seasoned programs manager with a device skills set that spans artificial intelligence, data science, human resources, and digital marketing. So let's take the first dive. I'm going to go straight to Forlorn Shaw Samuel. You ready? Yes, sir. Okay, Forlorn Shaw Samuel has a BSc in fisheries and aquaculture. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, then, and this is your question. This is coming from your self-introduction question. And this one says, can you provide a brief overview of your professional journey and how your skills align with your career goal? I'll take that again. Can you provide an overview of your professional journey and how your skills align with your career goals? Your time starts now. Thank you. My name is Paulo Mishole Konsamwe. I graduated from Kogi State University, where I obtained my BSc in Fisheries and Agriculture. So um, during my my course is five is five years course is a five years course. So during those moments, when I was in final level first semester, I did my internship at Nanja State near Busa at. National Institute, Institute of Freshwater Fisheries Reserve, which is NIFRI. So on my internship, I was able to conduct some parameters, some water parameters, and I was able to learn so many things about fisheries and agriculture. On this occasion, I was able to join um, a fish farm, which is around my institute there where I studied my, my internship. So I was able to do some little things. So after then, I was oh I gra I finished my my school. I graduated from from school, and then after then I served at AKT, the State University. And I served at um AKT Technology Incubation Center, where I finished my NYISC. And unfortunately, all these congratulations has contributed to many of my old careers in life. Thank you so much for sharing that thought. I I love fish a lot. And if in, in future, in case you eventually open up a restaurant, please kindly invite me. I will be there to right. definitely patronize that. Thank you so much for that insight. Let's go back to uh, Paul, Paul Ajishafe. Paul Ajishafe has a, a B, a Bachelor in Education, at Education, and M, Master's Education in as same as Health Education. Am I right? Yes, yeah, right. Okay, then. And this is your question for Aji Shafe, uh, the same line in the same order as a dedicated. I went through your resume and I can see years and years of experience as a teacher. Good enough. Uh, my father uh, was a teacher, a lecturer uh, of 43 years, and I knew definitely how disciplined teachers are. As a dedicated teacher, how do you create a positive and simulating learning environment for your students? ensuring both the academic and personal growth. I'll take that again, Paul. He says, as a dedicated teacher, how do you create a positive and stimulating learning environment for your students, ensuring both the academic and personal growth? Your time starts now. Yeah, thank you very much for the question. As it a uh, well-trained teacher, you must be knowledgeable about the curriculum. And also you must have a uh, lesson plan in order to communicate to the students. And also uh, students are very, uh, are very in their mode of learning. So you must get to know your students and also see them at the pace in which they can assimilate with you. And, and being over the years, being a teacher, I've also learned about to tolerate students because they are from different backgrounds and they can also learn differently. And over the years also, we've also integrated uh, instructional materials in order for our students to be able to see and also to uh, the audio and the visual aspects in order to uh, accelerate their learning process. I think with this, the students will be able to learn and be able to uh, support. We are good. I'm going to be able to support 
safe classroom environment for my students. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for that. I can uh, agree less with you, uh, student. You must know the pace of learning of every student as a teacher. Uh, that's a very good one. I I'll go back to uh, Lekon. Uh, Lekon, this is for you. This is an experience question, and it says here, this is a skill question. It says, you mentioned excellent communication skills in your resume. How do you apply these skills to motivate and inspire others in a professional setting? Please kindly listen to those, that question, and I'm expecting that you answer that question according to uh, the question content. It says, uh, you mentioned excellent communication skills in your resume. How do you apply these skills to motivate and inspire others in a professional setting? Leko, your time starts now. Yeah, like I said, oh, I worked at a oh during my 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 seven period where I served at the you know, like state technology Incubation center. So let's say for instance, what I've learned about these uh, communication skills. Now let's take for instance in an, in an organization. Oh, uh, at first when you are employed, you have to come low. You have to come low, learn more about things, learn more about the environment, how things are being done there. You don't have to be fast forward. You don't have to be so, so fast in doing things. You don't have to be fast forward. So you just have, then you just, you don't, you don't, you have to bring things down. Learn how things are being done there. Don't just say, don't just, then if, if there is any need for you to talk, or maybe there is some, some little changes in, the, in, in things there, Maybe there is a problem you, you need to address. Then you have to you have to create a critical thinking. I'll find a way you'll be able to apply this critical thinking to this problem. Find a way in which you can be able to solve or be of help to this to be, to this kind of problem too. And then more also, oh, and then more also, you have to be more more communicative with your colleagues because you can't do it you can't do it all alone. You have to communicate with others. It is. Through when you are communicate, communicating with others, that's the only way you can find a app to do something. So you have to, you need these communication skills to, to attain everything. Thank you so much. Uh, communication skills is one soft skills that uh, you definitely will take you to another level as an employee. There are so many soft skills, uh, but that comes first. Uh, it has been there for years and years. As long as you can communicate, not talk uh, sincerely, uh, sky is definitely the limit for any employee. Paul, this is for you. In a teaching role, in your teaching roles, how do you incorporate technology and different instructional approaches to cater to device learning needs in your classroom? This is a skill question. I'll take that again, Paul. In your teaching roles, how do you incorporate technology and different instructional approaches to cater to diverse learning needs in your classroom? Your time starts now. All right. Thank you. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to get familiar with the different instructional approaches and technology options for the classrooms. And after discovering that, would that be suitable for the uh, subjects to be taught? If that will not be suitable, then I have to improvise in, uh, in the case of that uh, topic. And after, uh, after that, I need to also consider the students to be taught. Uh, from which background are they from? Uh, you don't imagine teaching students from a rural, uh, teaching them with a sophisticated equipment that they are not familiar with based on to those people that are from the urban region, that uh, they have uh, vast uh, exposures. So you need also to consider the students to be taught. So this and this have to be put in place in order to have good communication with the students and also to pass knowledge into them. Thank you so much. I, I did like that. And uh, uh, sincerely, I definitely will agree with you on uh, those principles and processes of uh, learning in the digital space as we find ourselves. Uh, this one goes to Lekon uh, for Lauren Shaw, and this is an experience question, and we're going back to your resume. It says, during your time at Entourage Integrated Trust Limited as a credit officer, how did you manage the process of disbursing loans and collecting 
repayment. I'll take that again. In your resume, you did say that you work with Entourage Integrated Trust Limited as a credit officer. And this is the question. How did you manage the process of disbursing loans and collecting repayment? Please talk to me. Um, at first, when collecting payment, we uh, when disbursing um, payment to customers. So we onboard customers who are who are who are ready to have loans from us from us with some you know, credentials. We collect some credentials from, from them. So and uh, we we take it to the to the head office, we send it to the head office. Some some of these people might have some little, they might even be kind of generous at first in collecting all these loans. So after disbursing all these loans to them, sometimes it might there might be a little problems in all those things. Now, so now we collect we this when we collect the credentials from them, we disburse loans to them. Then after then, maybe after a week, we start collecting payments from them, in, in which they pay every week. Maybe a to a total amount of hundred thousand naira is, is disbursed to them. So and then so some little interest are being put on that of which they will be paying every week every week back to the company so now in collect sometimes you you encounter problems like yeah, sometimes you encounter problems in collecting loans from in collecting back the, the money you you brought them so all these things you don't allow this to weigh you down you just have to keep on and trying to convey them to bring back what they will. thank you so much uh pay back what you collected right I, I do have an experience when I was in Nigeria where uh, people in Ibadan, they call it, how do you say that? Bomuli Lanta, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that you must, when you collect, you definitely must pay back. And uh, it's it's pathetic that people can get a loan, but it's difficult for them to definitely pay back. It's all about integrity. I'll go back to you, Paul, and this is an experience question. And I will going back to your resume. As an health, as a health educator, uh, it says here in your experience as a health edu educator at the Polytechnic Ibadan Teaching Hospital, how did you engage with the community and contribute to health education class? I'll take that again. In your resume, you did talk about how you worked as a health educator at the Polytechnic Ibadan Teaching Hospital, and this is the question. How did you engage with the community and contribute to ed education classes? Your time starts now. All right, thank you very much, sir. Health education is all about informing people about their health, how to make a well uh, decision about health. In Polytechnic Ibadan, where it, uh, the teaching hospital is meant for the students and for the general populace. Uh, I was opportunity to be at the um, public health sector decisioned information to the uh, to the expected models and also to those uh, model with infants. So I was I taught them health education classes in Yoruba and in English in some cases, and also uh, I also attended seminars with the. Uh, professionals there in uh, Polytechnic Ibadan in order to get more vast with the surroundings. Also, uh, part of what they do there is the environmental. Uh, but for the four weeks that I was posted to there, there was an inch so that they, they were unable to go for the environmental process whereby they educate the people and the students in order to keep their posters clean and also to ensure that their workplaces are clean. For the space of that four weeks, we were not able to go for that. But uh, when I went there during my master's uh, internship, I think I did not um, post it on my CV. We were opportune to also teach students about the COVID measures. And I was opportune also to help them to input their data in their cards during the COVID-19 session. I think those are the things that we do as an educator because we are not uh, 
we are not permitted to give drugs and we are only permitted to do or to give uh, information to students and to the general public. Thank you so much for that elaborate uh, explanation. I did like that. Uh, let's go back to uh, Lekon. this is a scenario question. It's scenario questions. Uh, you must put yourself in that uh, atmosphere, in that space. Yeah. This one says here, suppose you encounter a challenging negotiation in your future role. Okay, How would you approach it drawing from your past negotiation experience? It's talking about your negotiation skills. This is a scenario question. I'll take that again. Suppose you encounter a challenging negotiation scenario in your future role, how would you approach it? Drawing from your past negotiation experience. Tell us about your negotiation skills. The time starts. Um, so I supposing I encountered some problems concerning some thing in my business. So from there, I I just have to keep calm at first. Keep it calm is just like make your cool at first. Then try to understand what the problem is all about. Why did you encounter it? Where is the problem coming from? And how can you even put in your best to, to know that, to, to see that there is a solution to this? So at first, you, you have to just, like I said, you have to keep your cool. Then try to know where this problem is coming from, identify the kind of problem that is embedded in this kind of situation. Then also, what, what, really, what really brought about this problem and identify it. Then also find a way in which you can solve, you can find the lasting solution to this problem. I believe, I believe by that you can be able to like, you can be able to like solve anything and negotiate calmly. Be of like, be, be kind of friendly. Not that the one that you 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 go to negotiate with someone, you talk to someone in 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 an aggressive way. That that there won't be any solution. I believe when you are calm, when you try to locate some little problems and where where it's coming from and what to do about it, I believe you'll be able to succeed in it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I like that uh, deep explanation as. Well, uh, let's go straight to negotiation skills is one of skills that all employees must have in real life, in in uh, digital space, in, in as as an employer, as an employee, as such skills is very vital and crucial to the success of any employee. It's negotiation skills. Because every day of our life, uh, we have a platform to negotiate, negotiation for peace, negotiation for salary, negotiation within the family, negotiation within myself and faith. It happens every time. So it's definitely part of a uh, process as we speak. So let me go straight to Paul. Uh, uh, it says here, as an operations lead, managing partnership and client relationship is crucial. Can you describe a scenario where effective relationship management played a key role in the success of the project. I'll take that again, Paul. As an operations lead, managing partnership and client relationship is very crucial. Can you describe a scenario where effective relationship management played a key role in the success of a project you were involved? The time starts now. Uh, as an operation lead, uh, uh, Buckyard Ventures is a venture that was owned by me, and the main goal is to supply uh, students with uh, educational information, also to also help them with printing and every other thing. So there was a time we lacked space and we had to operate. And due to our uh, effective communication and also the collaboration with uh, the board of the Faculty of Education, we were able to get a space in order to carry out our work. So with uh, the 
collaborations we also add we also uh, get more funds from friends in order to start up because we had uh, i we had uh, issues with startup so but due to the effective communications with others and other of my friends that we finished together we were able to get funds to start up the organization and what about uh customers and in a little space when we start this place is wouldn't for any other organization that is competing with many competitors it will have been a drag a dragging but due to the fact that we have good communication skills and we are able to sell ourselves very much to the students so we started and we have also increased in numbers and also our profit margin has also increased thank you so much for for that uh quick one samuel uh, this is the last question and you can also prepare question for me immediately we round up with paul this is your question and it's a management ability question as someone who has worked in diverse role, how do you manage your time and prioritize your tax effectively? He's talking about your time management. How do you manage your time somewhere and prioritize tax effectively? This is your time. Speak now. Samuel, right? Yes, please. Oh. Um... In an organization, you have to manage your time. That time is very, very good in an organization in managing times. Because this time, you will be able to solve some new things. Even, you can even put yourself into some tests, tests, some tests, like what we're doing now in a, in, a, in, a, in a limited time. How can you express your test? How can you be able to talk? And taking that management time, management of time into organization, you have to be able to manage time. Some create some critical thinking. Be very very creative with your time because I said time is money because it is what you do with your time. That is what you that's what we bring some knowledgeable things into you. So you have to make some. You have to be very, very conversant with this your time because it is this time you you can work with any any other person, like unlike oh um, like the white people, they like if you want to if if they want to give you some works they ask them from you what how many minutes will you be able to work with this, so you have to like mm, let me let me okay let me say in the space of thirty minutes. Let me be able to finish this work, and maybe probably you'll be able to spend like twenty minutes. Then you that means you end that trust, not the one you say you 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 say in a space of thirty minutes and you are using forty five minutes or one hour. So that means you'll not be able to manage. You're not even able to manage your time. So you have to be more more time conscious and be able to manage your time very well in any organization. Thank you. Thank you so much. I I quite agree with you that time is money. As a matter of fact, is the most. Uh, expensive commodity that you definitely uh, can spend. And some scholars do believe that even when you do manage your time, they still believe that you, you are yet to manage it appropriately. So what that means is that uh, every time of our life, we must uh, examine and reassess our time investment in any uh, project or uh, situation we find ourselves. It's very expensive to, to get back. Uh, your last question... Uh, Paul, and this one, we're getting into your business. It says, managing budget and financing allocations at Paul Cares Ventures must have been very challenging. You know, as we're running the interview, you're also busy running your business as we speak. You know, that mm -hmm. makes <laughs> you know, I like that. So, managing budget and financing allocation at Paul Cares Venture must have been challenging, I can see that. How do you approach financial decisions to ensure the company's growth while maintaining budgetary constraint? I'll take that again. Managing your budget is challenging. The question is, how do you approach financial decision to ensure the company's growth while maintaining budgetary constraint? managing that budget you have a constraint on your budget how do you take decisions on financial matters your time starts now 
All right. Um, something I learned a while in school, while in secondary school in economics, is that we always have a scale of preference. And this has to be that you set your priority first and you have some that you have to forego. So in podcast ventures, we learned that also, and we also imbibe that, that we set our priority. Is this, would this increase uh, our efficiency? Would this increase our output and input? So we first said this, and if that does not go, like now, currently, uh, there's NYC registration ongoing, and they changed the format in which we need to register students. So, and the equipment will cost us about 35, 40,000 naira. So we think cool twice that at least those students in University of Baden are not yet going for the service yet. So that means we can still pay it for some while. So we can also channel that money into another venture so that by the time University of Baden are going in mass for the uh, NYSC, then by that time we'll have gotten the equipment for the service. So and these are what we put in uh, as priority in our business in order not to buy what is not necessary at the wrong time. So that is what we do in ensuring that, okay, we have these resources, we have these resources as now, we, uh, the first priority is that we have papers. We have our printers that are working, our laptops are working, the generator is standby. So we, we must ensure that those ones have at the highest priorities and also the convenience of our customers. These things, we ensure that we first put them at priority and every other things that we need to bring in, also we bring them in without bringing uh, much burden on the employers and even on our customers. Thank you so much. That was a very in-depth analysis. And uh, uh, talking about finance, we all, we all know that as, as an employee entrepreneur, uh, we must understand uh, financial literacy and uh, financial intelligence. We must know uh, when to shop. We must know when the salary comes in, how you budget. Uh, we must know that we must save. And of course, we must know how definitely to do research before you spend that money. It's, that's all about financial literacy and uh, uh, financial intelligence, which I believe we did justice to that as we speak. I want to say a very big thank you to uh, Foloran Show Lake on somewhere. And of course, poor cares as well. Before we uh, quickly uh, call it a day, Fritz, can you give us your assessment of these two candidates? Hello, good afternoon. Um, I'd to apologize first. I was taking off the interview earlier. I had some network delicious it's okay I'm so good. so um first off thank you samuel and paul thank you for being here today despite the um rescheduling we've had on two occasions last week so thank you sorry for the inconveniences thank you for being a part of this um samuel I hope your mom is better yes yes thank you so much thank great you. thank you okay so Excellent outing. Congratulations to both Paul and Samuel. You're both very articulate and very clearly um, know your onion in the areas of your specialties and what you do, the experiences you've gathered over the years. You made that very clear during the course of the interview. So that is huge kudos on my part. Um, I think I'll just put out one observation. This will be for you, Samuel. In a situation where you're not sure you understand a question wholly, I would advise that you, you ask for the question to be repeated or further explained or ask in a different form, probably slanted as from another angle, just for you to get it properly. And because the most important thing to answering the question adequately is fully understanding the question. So first you need to ensure that you and your interviewer, you're on the same page with 
what they're expecting of you from that question. So you can always, you can ask the question back. Do you mean this? This is what you're asking, just to be clear on it. And Paul, you can also just um, take that also as a side note. Well, I think that's my, uh, for now, the major observation is that when you go for an interview, ensure you understand the question before you get into answering it. That would guide your approach to it as well as the way you answer it too. So that will be all for me for now, sir. Thank you so much. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much, Faith. Uh, to buttress that, we all did good. You did well. Uh, one of the strengths of going for an interview for a job seeker is to be very clear audible and make your point as briefly and sharp, uh, which I feel that, uh, Paul, you did justice to that. And Samuel, you also tried in that direction as well. But uh, uh, to be fair to Lekon, I'm also expecting that in the future, that you definitely, there's nothing wrong to tell the interviewer that I have no idea, but I'm willing to find out. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to get into it. That is, believe me, there's nothing wrong to say that rather than saying what you are not sure of. Because when you do that in an interview, that when you leave, it makes a fool of you. You know, they can analyze and see you definitely don't know what you're talking about. So uh, be calm. Anytime you go for an interview, just uh, take it in, suck it in. And just like Faith said, you are not sure. Ask again. If you don't know it, just say, I have no idea, but I definitely I can learn through uh, the process as well. It's, it's always allowed as well. So uh, I'm going to be sitting on the odd seat. So your question, I need one question each from you guys. Uh, talk to me. Uh, Paul, what's your question for me? 